In the name of God. Hi, I am Hanya Khadem from Jahan Max Educational Academy. This is Mr. Jahani Modeling Course and I'll be translating it for you. Thank you for choosing us. I'm here with you with our Pro Modeling Learning Package. It's a modeling learning course which teaches you how to 3D model objects in 3D Studio Max software professionally. 3D Studio Max is a software which was first used at almost 1990 by a group called Used, and uh, from that year, which its those versions was available, uh, it started to become famous. And after that, Autodesk company bought it. And right now, we are using its 2019 and 2020 versions. 3D Studio Max is a software that can be used in many different fields, like architectural, industrial, animation, game, and etc. And also recently, it's been used for VR or virtual realization, which has a lot of uses. You will be able to make a lot of money with this software because it has a lot of different branches especially recently that 3d printers has made it possible to bring your models into real life very easily and at a low cost in the past which i used to work in industrial field cnc and pantograph uh, machiners would do this for us we used to 3d model objects like floorings wall plugs statues and uh, etc then with these machineries we would print it on some systems or materials like aquasive to create the mold after having the mold we could create our object using different kinds of materials like resin and i recall it uh, had the lowest price in comparison with other metals I will talk about industrial field in this course, but most of our topics would be related to architecture because most of our students are in this major. But we will talk about all fields as much as possible. I suggest you to install 2018 version of the software because it doesn't have some bugs and errors of the previous versions. We are using a very powerful software that allows us to model whatever we want professionally in many different fields. I told you before uh, that how useful it can be in different fields. In this course, we will teach you different kinds of modeling, including primary modeling with 3ds Max default shapes like box, chamfer box, and etc in our early sessions and after that we will talk about editable pulley sp lines and many other subjects and methods methods like low poly and advanced modeling and um, then we will teach you how to model complicated objects like cars or zohadid works and etc in 3ds max some plugins and software will also be taught in this course. I hope this package will be useful for you uh, to reach the goal you want and have a good income from this software. I will be at your service in support group and will help you with your questions and problems to solve it uh, together. Let's make a deal. In fact, uh, I have a request and I will guarantee something in return. I've worked on these uh, courses a lot. I've been teaching 3ds Max almost more than 14 years. And I want to use all of my experiences in this learning course to teach you 3D modeling in the best way. And I hope you all reach a great level of 3D modeling after finishing this course. Now, I want to guarantee that in this course you will definitely reach a very good level in uh, 3D modeling, just like thousands of our other students 
uh, that reached a very good level as after just several sessions. Which their works are available on my Instagram page, Jahan Max, and also on our Telegram groups, and you can see them. Everyone could reach a great quality in their modelings after just several sessions, and you will definitely too, no matter what your major is, and it doesn't need a special kind of knowledge. You just need to have motivation, struggle, and perseverance. These three factors are really important for 3D Max artists. Be sure that you can be professional from the beginning. Unfortunately, many of our students tell us in the beginning that they want to become able to 3D model just a little bit. But no, that is completely wrong. The request I have is you have to dream of the best. There is no such a thing as average. You have to be the best in your market, you have to be the best 3D artist that can 3D model the hardest objects and you can definitely reach this quality, but you have to try so hard. 3D Max isn't an easy software, I certainly tell you that this is one of the hardest softwares. You have to put a lot of efforts and time and be sure that in return you will get a great result. If you become a professional 3D artist, you can achieve the income and condition you want. I can show you hundreds of my students that just within several months achieve great income and conditions like immigration and you can definitely be one of them. But as I told you, you have to have motivation and perseverance. You might get tired many times. Uh, usually students are so motivated at the early sessions but after several sessions, it might get a little weaker. It doesn't have much difference. With a good support, you can reach the quality of attendance courses. But with a proper plan. In fact, we have to make a commitment to have a good plan for practicing 3D Studio Max. Anyway, in the process of learning 3D Studio Max, which might be between 1 to 5 months, you really have to limit your spare time. Um, not completely, but it takes a lot of time and you don't have to expect to become professional uh, very easily. You really have to put your focus on the software. I hope with our strong support, you will achieve a very good result. So, in return, I want you to do your practice, spend time and have motivation and continuance. So, we all promise to have commitment to each other and I hope for us to have a very strong start. I want to teach you from the beginning and very simple. We start with the simple shapes and I will tell you which parts are not necessary. In fact, it will take a lot of time uh, to talk about the unnecessary parts and menus of 3ds Max. Maybe more than uh, 200 hours won't be enough either. Once uh, I had a course in university which was technical and I had to teach them these unnecessary parts. After many sessions, they weren't able to have a render with a good uh, quality, unlike our students in attendance courses, which can have good quality renders after 7 or 8 sessions. In fact, in our attendance courses, we teach a little bit of everything, such as modeling, rendering, and etc., because it's a combination of different courses. In this course, you will be able to 3D model objects in a good quality in comparison with other courses. Let's shorten the speech. I prepared some pictures to show you and give you some general information before starting. As you can see, this software has started in 1988 to 1990 by youth group 
which its DOS versions were available. And then in this way, the versions got promoted and right now, we are using its 2019 version. As you can see, we had good promotions in different versions. And from 1996, Windows versions got started, which made the use of this software much more. And this is Mr. Gary Yust, the creator of the great software of 3ds Max. And this is one of the 3ds Max early versions, the 2.5 version. And as you can see, it has a very simple environment, but now it has a lot of more features. And this is a picture of the used group. Well, let's start from the beginning. The file part in 2018 version, and you can also use the 2016 version, but I don't recommend you the earlier versions. I will put all the programs I will teach you in software folder of the package and you can use them. So let's have a strong start in 3ds Max with energy and motivation. Well, uh, from file menu, we start with new and reset part. New and reset buttons are for restarting our projects. I personally am used to use the reset button, but I want to tell you the difference between these two. Look, for example, we have created a shape with some segments or some settings like lights or cameras in our scene. And now we want to have these same settings in several other projects. For saving these settings for our next project, we could use the new button. I click on the new button and as you can see, even the view hasn't changed. Now, if I start my new project, it will use the previous settings. As I told you, for example, you have set a lot of settings in your project, for example, for lights or cameras. If you want to use them again, you have to use the new button. But if you want to reset the settings, you would use the reset button. And you won't have your previous settings anymore. And everything changes to the default setting of the 3ds Max, which is specified in a notepad in order to return to the default setting after any changes. The next part is open, save and save as. In this part, you can open different projects, but as you can see, there is a limitation in file extensions. In this part, you can open only files with a max extension. For example, I import the file of this car into the scene. And in fact, the loss of materials has a different reason that I don't want to talk about it right now. So look, you can import everything like a personage or everything else that has been created in 3ds Max before into your scene this way. For saving our project, we use save as and save buttons. You can choose save as and give it a new location. Be careful, if you want to open your project with earlier versions of 3ds Max later, you have to change the save as type part, otherwise you won't be able to open it with a lower version. In this part, you have to select the version you are going to open the file with if it's an earlier version. For example, now that I'm using 2018 version, previous versions are available and I can save my file as them. If I want to open it with 2016 version of 3ds Max, for example, I have to select the 2016 and then save my file. But its vice versa is okay. It means that if you are working with 2016 version, you won't have a problem for opening it on 2018 version. 
The next part is view image file part. But if you are working with earlier versions like 2016, this button is on the rendering part. And you can import your images into the 3D Max software. But in this version, is, uh, its location has been transferred here on the file menu and you can use it to open your image file on 3ds Max. This is a very useful feature. For example, you want to model an object, you can open its image from this part. And um, you'd better put it here on the corner so you would be able to see the image while you are modeling. It's easier this way because you don't have to optimize and minimize your image every time you want to see it. And you can minify or enlarge it this way. And you can save this image again or make some changes on it or print it. The next part is archive button. When you want to save just a normal model, you won't need to uh, archive it. But if you have some images, textures or files like IES files uh, for lighting or etc. in your scene, then you have to uh, archive your project. Ar archiving collects all of the information in your project from all over your computer and saves it as a zip file in uh, your required location. And you can use it whenever you want by extracting it. In the modeling course, you don't need to use this part, but if you are starting the material part, it's better for you to do it. Anyway, it is not necessary for your own computer because it recognizes the path on your computer. For example, you use some textures from your D drive, that doesn't make a problem. But when you transfer your file to another computer, or when you are using an external hard and you use some of the files from the hard, after unplugging this, the external hard, you will lose some of the data if you don't archive it and just use save as button. So uh, in the archive part, you can select the location for your file and um, save it as a zip file. As you can see, it is saved here and contains all of the information of the project that is necessary. These are the textures that are used in the project. So for using this zip file, you can extract it from here. The next part is import and export part. I told you about open and save as parts. They can just save as or open 3ds Max files. It means just the files with Max extension. But in the import part, you can open projects with another extensions from different softwares and use them. For example, AutoCAD, Solid, SketchUp, and etc. For example, if you want to model something with uh, the exact measures, you can import its AutoCAD file and draw it according to the CAD plan. We will talk about it later in a session because importing AutoCAD files has a lot of uses in architectural projects. They usually add some new extensions in new versions which is very good and lets you use several other softwares uh, besides Macs for help. So it was for opening. Now we want to see how can we save our file and another software. For this we use export button. In this part you can have these extensions. For example if you want to save a max 2D project as AutoCAD file, you can use this part. Or for example you want to prepare your work 
Uh, for a CNC machine, use this part. For example, when I was working on the industrial major, the STL extension was a proper one to open it on uh, a software like Solid. In that software, we would import weight, volume, and other parameters, and we would use it for industrial works. And there are other extensions which you can use. The next part in the file menu that is usable is uh, the merge button. When we open a file, for example, let me uh, import a max file. Well, when I open it, all of the data I had goes away. But if I want to combine an object with my recent scene, I would have to use the merge button. For example, in this project that is loading, which is an interior scene, I want to add some chairs and other objects. As you can see, our previous file is gone. Now, if I want to add another file to this scene, I open the import part and use merge. For example, I want to add this car to my scene. Here you can choose the layers and groups the file contains or select all of them by clicking on all button. And here I can choose its different parts like cameras, lights or etc. Well, I click on OK and now it's added to the scene. Now I press the Z button to zoom and see it better. Well, but the scales are a bit different. Now I'm seeing these in my scene this way. An easier way for importing a file into the scene is to drag it. For example, I want to import an object, for example, a vase. I just have to drag its file and merge it this way. Now our model is added to the scene very easily, but be careful. If you want to have the models with their materials, you have to enter their path in Customize, Configure User Path in External File Part. In fact, the model uh, we've added has some data like a PDF file or a picture of the model and usually uh, have a texture file. These are the textures that are used in that model. You just have to copy this address and paste it here by pressing Ctrl plus V and then click on use path. Now you have your model with all of its textures in your scene. So, when you drag a file, it gives you some options. Let me show you this again. When I drag this max file, these options appear. For example, if I click on the open file, all of my previous data will disappear. If I choose merge file, it will be added in the scene. And XREF is for reducing the file volume. We will talk about it in another session because I want to talk about it completely but we can't do it in this session. So I will talk about this and all of its methods completely later in another session. But now I give you a summary. By clicking on XREF, the added file doesn't have any segments and is so light. If you delete other models in the scene, uh, we could see that it doesn't have any polygons. It's in the scene figuratively. It's a very good and light method, but you have to be careful about some parameters which I will tell you later.
Well, we talked about the import part and merge button. We don't have any other important buttons in uh, import part. Let's go to save as part. We have save selected button here. For example, you open a project, then you see some useful objects in it and you want to use them in your scene. Um, here you can use save selected button. For example, I select this car and click on the save selected button. And now I can save it in my required location. It just has saved my selected object, not, not the whole project. Now I can use it in my scene this way. I will talk about the reference part in another session. Now let's talk about the toolbar's different parts. Look, this is the file section with max tag on it. And here we have the most useful parts like opening the project button, save as button and undo and redo. By clicking on the undo button, you can undo your actions one by one. Its shortcut key is Ctrl plus Z. For example, I delete these files in this way one by one. And now I can bring them back by pressing Ctrl plus Z keys. Now I can press redo or its Ctrl plus Y shortcut key and bring my actions back again. But in the default settings, there is a limitation for the number of actions you can undo or redo. You can only go back to 20 levels before. You can increase it from the customized part, preferences, general. A proper level would be almost between 100 to 150. It means you can go back 100 levels without any problems. Now we want to talk about files tab it has a very important part that you have to know it from the beginning it's the auto backup part be careful to check it to make sure it's active it says backups from your project automatically sometimes something happens and you lose your project without saving it by activating this part, you can easily recover your project. It saves your project in the default location. You can find it in Documents, 3ds Max, Autobag folder. As you can see, there is several Autobag files, which you can specify the number of them here in Auto Backup section. As your file gets heavier, this 5 minutes amount would be vexing because it saves a backup file every 5 minutes. So you can increase it a little bit to 15 minutes for example, although it's risky but it's worth it. And here you'd better increase the number of uh, auto back files too. It takes some space but it doesn't have any harm. And besides, it makes your project safer. For example, now it's 11.45, in the default settings, it saves 3 backup files every 5 minutes. And after 15 minutes at 12, it will replace the 11.45 backup file with the new backup file. So it replaces the first file with the last one. So with these settings, you always have access to the last 3 backup files. So we can increase it for the safety of our files. And here in Autobac file name part, you can write a name for the project Autobac files. You can change the default address. From this part. And uh, select your own location. The default location is in the documents. But you can change it. Or 
or uh, change its folder name. There is another important part that we have to be careful about in the beginning. Go to Customize Preferences, the Viewport section. There are some settings that I have to tell you. In recent versions of 3ds Max, you see a halo around your selected objects. Maybe you are not used to it and you like to eliminate it, like previous versions. You can do it from Customize Preferences in Viewport tab and inactivate this uh, selection uh, preview part. Now you don't see the blue halo around the shapes, although it can be an advantage in new versions because it shows the selected objects better. Another usable part in this section is display drivers part. In this part you can specify your viewport display type according to your system hardware components. Look, if your system is almost powerful and have tolerable RAM, CPU and graphic card, I suggest you to use the default Nitros option, which is recommended by the software. But if your system is a little weaker, for example, your RAM is under 4, it's just an example because you can't determine the strength of your system by one part and you have to consider the balance of all parts together. You will figure out if your system has the ability to work with Nitros option while you are working with it. So if your system is powerful and can handle the Nitros option, don't change the default setting because it has some good features and options. In fact, it displays the shadows better and viewport control is easier and these options make the scene heavier so if your system is weaker and you want to lighten your viewport you can select the legacy direct 3d option to apply the changes after selecting one of the options you have to close the 3ds max program and open it again or if you have a very powerful graphic card you can use legacy opengl part the nitro software part is for very weak systems which eliminates a lot of items and makes it possible to open your scene in very weak systems but in fact you have to know that 3ds max requires a good system at least 8 gigs ram uh, cry 7 but certainly it depends all the components have to be matched with each other but as much as ram cpu and graphics are higher although graphics wasn't important in the previous versions especially for vray and a lot of plugins or softwares like lumion program which now graphic is very important for it We'd better expand for the graphic card too. You'd better get these three main components with a good power. If you use Vira, you will see that in the new versions, 3.5 and 3.6 versions, it uses the GPURT mode, which requires a powerful graphic card. But in the previous versions, we were just relying on CPU. Well, shorten the speech for the system I am using, the Nitros mode is proper. Let me show you my system hardware components. It's Core i7-4770, my RAM is 16GB and is almost an acceptable system for 3ds Max. The Windows isn't much important, I'm using Windows 10, Windows 7 is good too. But apparently Windows 8 has some errors in most of the softwares, so except Windows 8, other versions of Windows are okay. But we prefer the latest versions as they are safer and has more powerful antiviruses. So I close this part. 
and I won't talk about the preferences part for now. I want to talk about another part which is important from the beginning and that's unit setup. In this part you can determine the units of the program. I have to activate the metric part. Look, when we create a shape in our viewport, we don't know what are the units of uh, these numbers, centimeters, meters, or etc. It's not clear and you have to determine the units from customized unit setups. The units you can use for industrial works which requires high accuracy would be millimeters. For elevation, interior and exterior design you can choose centimeters which is easier because most of the details is in uh, centimeters. For example, you want to draw cornice or a 10 centimeters frame and with centimeter unit you don't need to use decimals. And we use meters and kilometers for more enormous projects. So I set my units on centimeters and this part changes uh, proportionately when you change the matrix part. Well, we don't change this part. It is the international units, which is for lighting. We have nothing to do with this part. System unit setup is for setting the scale of unit uh, proportions. In this part, if you want to have a good control of you, your viewport, you'd better set it proportionately with your metrics. Maybe you have experienced it. When you want to zoom in, it jumps between the frames so quickly or you can't control your viewport easily. Here you have to select the centimeter unit like the matrix part. I want to explain it with more details for you to comprehend the difference between these two parts. Look, as I said, if you set this part on centimeters, you will have your numbers in centimeters at this part. Or if I enter a number here, it would be in centimeters with CM abbreviation. So this is about the matrix part. But in customized unit setup, let me reset the scene and tell you from the beginning. In customized unit setup, I told you about this part. Now here in the system unit setup part, I set the system units a scale on inches. I click on OK and reset the program. Now let's create a box with these dimensions. Now I'm zooming in and out by my mouse scroll wheel. But let's see what happens if I set system unit setup on kilometers. Now I can zoom in and out very easily because centimeters and inches are very close together. And I press the Z button to exactly zoom on my selected object. Now I set my units at the system unit setup part on kilometers. Nothing happens yet. I have to reset the program first. Now I create a box with 500 centimeters dimensions like the previous one and now as you can see this happens. When you roll the mouse scroll wheel you don't see the box anymore. It just gives you the proper control of the viewport for objects with enormous dimensions. As you can see now it's jumpy and I can't control it even with the Ctrl plus Alt plus pressing a scroll wheel which I will talk about them later. 
Now I think you completely comprehended it with this example. It's usually a question for students which set this part up but don't know its usage. I wanted you to comprehend this part completely. So we'd better use the centimeters for this part and for this metric part too and reset the program to apply these changes. Be careful that you'd better apply these changes from the beginning because you have to reset your program for applying the changes and if you do uh, it in the middle of your project you will have some problems with adjusting the units. Let's talk about the other parts. This is our main toolbar in the customized part. If you open the show UI part, which UI is abbreviation of user interface. And you have it here too. You can activate or deactivate different parts. For example, the main toolbar part. You can also activate or deactivate it with Alt plus 6 shortcut keys. This main toolbar part is very useful for us. In the show UI part, we have another important part, the show command panel. It always has to be activated. But if you want to have a bigger screen, you can use Ctrl plus Y keys which hides your command panel and the main toolbar to let you have a better control on your viewport. The next part is ribbon. I want to talk about this part which is really important in the modeling course. This part has some professional items which the main toolbar doesn't. I can hide or unhide it with right click from here too. Now it's a little small. I enlarge it. These are the parts in the ribbon toolbar and I can drag it to have a better access to them. And you can add some other toolbars from here. Well, let's go to the next part. Let me reset the program because I couldn't close that part which was a bug. We talked about important parts in the customize menu. And this part is for animation which you can hide or unhide. Let's talk about the toolbars in this part. Undo and redo which we talked about. From the beginning please only and only try to use shortcut keys. If you are already using 3ds Max and you are used to click on the toolbars buttons it's a little harder for you to change your habits in comparison with the person who is starting to use 3ds Max for the first time. Please try to change your previous habits and only use shortcut keys from the beginning and adjust yourself. It makes it easier for you to have a speed and more control on your modeling process. You can even eliminate them so as you remember undo is for going back And here you can go forward with Ctrl plus Z and Ctrl plus Y shortcut keys. We never use this select and link button but because it is a part of the main toolbar I explain it for you in order not to get curio curious about them. I create several sphere shapes here. Then I copy some of them.
Now we want to link some of them together. See how I choose the origin and destination, the first and the second. Now if I move this one, as you can see, its other subsets move too. If I move these ones, they move separately. We call it the select and link mode. And if you want to unlink them, you have to use the unlink button. And now they are not connected together anymore. Another feature that we use more is the group. We can group our shapes from this part. This is different from the link mode and is more usable for us. When we move it, all of the shapes move together. And if you want to separate them, you can use ungroup button and now they are separated again. But in fact, they are still linked together because I haven't unlinked them yet. We can unlink them from here this way. We have some another parts similar to group which we will talk about later. Now I reset the program. We have selection filter in this part. Now I go to command panel. In this part, we have create tab. You can create different things like geometry shapes. We can have different geometry shapes here. A standard primitive part is for cre creating primary shapes. Let's see how can we create this shape. With the first click and holding it, you can determine the lengths and widths of your shape and by releasing it, you would be able to determine the height of the shape. Let's create some other shapes. We can use the combination of these shapes to create our models. The only provided model that we have in 3ds Max is this teapot, which is a symbol for 3ds Max and is one of the first models that has been created in 3ds Max. And in fact, it's one of the first 3D models that has been created by 3D modeling software and uh, that's the reason it's the only provided model we have here. We usually use it when we want to take a test render or for teaching manners. The next part is extended primitives. In this part we have some complicated shapes, well if I create a chamfer box, the edges will be smooth, as you can see. And in the modify part, under the parameters section, you can change the dimensions of the selected object. But pay attention that the object has to be selected. We can edit uh, the parameters of the shape here. And I will talk about the segments later. We'll talk about the other parts in other sessions. But I want to talk about another usable part here, the windows part. You can create different kinds of windows in this part. In fact, you can use this part in some special projects because most of the time we prefer to model our windows ourselves. The difference of this part is that it has some special settings which lets you to design your required windows just like provided models, but of course it doesn't have the quality of the provided ones and you can determine the way it pops up the next part is the AEC extender it has a three parts which doesn't have a good quality and we never use them we have railing here I will talk about its use in another session and it has a very good usage, you can create different kinds of railings in this part with some settings. And with this wall button, you can 
create vaults, which is not hard to create with editable poly method. So we preferably use editable poly instead of this part. We don't talk about the other parts now. And these are some plugins that I have added to 3D Max software. I want to tell you about some plugins which is usable for modeling. Two of the main plugins that are used for rendering are Corona and Viray, which their learning courses are available and you can purchase if you like. Now I want to talk about the standard and extended primitive in this session. Here when you create different shapes it uses random different colors for each of them for changing these colors to a single united color you can click on this paint box and select the color for example gray then you have to deselect the assigned random colors part now the color of every new shape that you create uh, will be the selected color the auto grid part is for placing the shape on a surface. When auto grid is unchecked, if you create a shape, it starts from the bottom. For creating a shape on the surface or of another one, you can use auto grid. By selecting it, you can create new shapes on any surface you want in your selected direction. I will talk about uh, selection filter part first let me tell you this it was geometry part here you can create 2d shapes i will talk about them later completely now with selection filter we can distinguish our selections the next part is different kinds of lights in 3ds max which we will talk about them in another courses this course is for modeling And these are different kinds of cameras that you can use and the software itself has a very powerful physical camera which we use. And these are the auxiliary parts which are detailed. For example, this is the tape part which you can use for measuring the dimensions. In the next part we have some elements like gravity, wind, explosions we could have in our scene. And this a barked button which is for animation as you can see if you want to move your character it simulates it for you which is limited in some special conditions and some other parts that I don't want to talk about them much for example we have a daylight it can simulate lights like real world or you can give it a location in order to set the light according to your desired country and the season. Which is so interesting and we have talked about them in some other courses. Let's go to the next part. The select object part It's for selecting uh, objects in the scene. By the way, I forgot to give you an example about this part. I created some different shapes from different parts. If you, for example, select the lights part in selection filter, although you choose all the shapes, you can only select lights. Or if you choose geometry part, you can just select the geometry shapes. In a crowded scene, many of your objects interfere with each other and with this feature you can filter your selection. The next part is select object part. This dashed line you see determine the area you want to select. I select all for this part. And its shortcut key is Q. And every time by pressing Q your selection shape will change. Or you can hold left click on this part, every part that has this little arrow on the corner it means it has different modes which you can use so this was for selecting objects and this is 
a spray mode which lets you select objects like this. The next part is select by name which is almost uh, similar to previous one with a difference. In this part you can control your selection better. For example if I only choose the 2D shapes part it just lists 2D shapes for me. Or if I only select lights part I can only select lights. In fact, it has some settings which we can talk about them later. For example, we can add some parts here in this window. We can use it for crowded scenes with a lot of objects. I can use some parts like uh, faces in order to make it more clear. By choosing this part, it will show me the faces of my selected objects. Sometimes our scene is so crowded and we don't know where are all the useless segments come from and they don't have any influences on our scene. So here we can eliminate the useless parts. Now I select geometry shapes part and sort them. And as you can see, uh, teapot002 is one of the objects that has the most segments in our scene. If you have used lights in your scene, you can change your viewport to the default by pressing Ctrl plus F, which we will talk about it later, about the viewport settings. The next part is select and move part, but let me tell you about window crossing first. Look, it doesn't have much usage, maybe it was usable if you were working on an AutoCAD important project. If I activate this crossing part, I can select this object this way. For selecting the object, I have to select it completely with all of its parts. It doesn't select the object by selecting just a part of it. And there are some settings for window crossing part which you can select left or right, but we don't talk about it. This part is for selecting and moving objects, one of the most important parts that we use most of the time. You can easily move objects in every direction you want through X, Y or Z axis. Here, if you click on x-axis, you won't be able to move your object in other directions. You can just move your object through x-axis. And here, we can just move it through y-axis or z-axis. For example, I want to make a copy of my object and I set it in a different position, although it's much easier with the snaps. But if my direction is locked on, x-axis I can't bring it close to the other one in y-axis because the direction is locked on x-axis. I have to click on the middle of the axis. They also have shortcut keys F5, F6, F7 and F8. These are the keys for locking the direction in different axes. For example, I click on x and now I click on the middle of them or press F8 key and make them close this way. But as I told you, this is much easier with the snaps, although we use this matter in dash method too. The next part is select and rotate. You can select the shape you want and rotate it. Like previous parts, you can rotate your shape in a special direction. It limits the rotation in your selected axis this way. If you want to rotate the shape in all three directions, you have to click on the middle of them. Now you can rotate it in all axes. The next part is select and uniform scale. In this part, you can change the scale of your selected object. And this way, you can change the scale of the subject in a special direction. Through every axis you want. Here is a very important tip about the scale. I create a shape and here you can see its dimensions. If I change its scale 
and make it smaller and then go to modify tab which is for editing the dimensions of the object as you can see the dimensions hasn't changed in comparison with the first one although we have made it smaller to see the real dimensions of this shape we could use this measure part you can see the real dimensions of the object here Now if I scale it through Z axis you would see that the Z dimension is changing or you can change the scale through all axis. So you can see the real dimensions of a shape under the utilities tab in measure part. And you can see the surface area in this part is useful for executive projects. For example you have modeled the kitchen and you want to figure out the amount of MDF material you need. You can see the surface area from here and buy your material according to it. You can also see the shape's volume here and in this shape part you can see the length of 2D shapes. And here in dimension part we have the length of the object in different axes. And new floater provides a shortcut for us because it's a very important comment and this way you can see it the whole time. The next part is select and place. In this part you can place an object on a surface. For example, you have an object in your scene which you have created before. Now if you want to place it on a surface, be careful that it's about objects and shapes that are already in your scene because if you want to create a new shape, you won't have a problem because you can check auto grid and create it on the surface in the first place but imagine you already have an object in your scene and you want to place it on a surface now you will have problems for this you have to go to different views and place it carefully which it won't be precise and as you can see it's a little hard but there is a very easy way to do this which has been added to the software from 2016 version and that's select and place part this shortcut key is Y. With this part, you can place your object on a surface precisely. It, the, it identifies the surfaces completely. See, for example, you can place the box on this sphere very easily. The next part is Viewport Control Toolbar. Now I want to talk about these buttons completely. As I told you before, please just use shortcut keys. These tools that we talked about in this session have shortcut keys. So please use their shortcut keys, W, E, R, and Y. In fact, the placement of these keys on the keyboard makes it so easy for you to use them. In the next session, you will learn how to use shortcut keys for different commands. But the Max's own shortcut keys are in good places and you don't need to change them. In this part we have zoom. If you want to zoom in or out, you can uh, use this part this way. We insist on using shortcut keys, so in this part you can use the mouse scroll wheel for zooming in and out. But if you want to zoom precisely, look, now it's a little jumpy, which we could adjust its sensitivity in unit setup as you remember. But if you want it to be more subtle you have to hold ctrl plus alt and by pressing the scroll wheel you can zoom in and out precisely the next part which can be useful is zoom extends part look if you have different objects in different parts of the scene it is a little hard to zoom on them but you can zoom on any object you want by selecting it and pressing the Z key and it will immediately zoom on the selected object. You just have to select it and press the Z key. The next part is maximize viewport toggle. In this part, in the default mode, you have four different viewports. 
you can choose the viewport you want it will be shown by this yellow frame and by clicking on this button you can full screen the selected viewport you can have access to any viewports you want its shortcut keys are shown here except for back and uh, right views because if you press the R it will switch to scale for this you can use the V key so all of these views have shortcut keys T for top, P for perspective, F for front and L for left and the rest aren't that useful but if you want to have access to right and back views you can press V and select the view you want for example if you press V and then R it goes to the right view I suggest you to try to use this view most of the time and go to different views with shortcut keys this view cube here can also help you a little uh, but for example its left view isn't a 2d view and you may make some mistakes in your modeling as you can see it's showing such a 3d left view now if you press L it would be the real left view we don't use the view cube much but you can use it sometimes for example in the beginning of your learning you may get lost in the viewport in this situation by pressing the home button you can get to the first place you were always try to create your shapes from this part from here to up to be able to control them in your viewport easier the next part is orbits you can orbit around your shape if you want to use it it's like this its shortcut key is Alt plus pressing the mouse scroll wheel which lets us orbit around the shape so we hold Alt and press and hold the scroll wheel. The next part is pan view. We use it a lot. Its shortcut is pressing the and holding the mouse scroll wheel and moving the mouse. Another usable part in pan view is walking mode which lets you move in the viewport like this. It can be useful in some viewports. The next subject we want to talk about is about the ways we can make a copy of an object. We can copy an object in several ways and we want to talk about them now. I talk about the first method in this session and I will talk about the second and third methods in other sessions completely. There is an easy way to make a copy of an object. In this way, you will have to hold shift and move the object through your required axis. I create a teapot here. Let me set less segments for it. Now I want to tell you the difference between copy and instance. By the way, you can make a copy with two other modes too. You can hold shift and rotate your object and by determining number of copies here you will have these numbers of copies in your selected direction or you can hold shift and make a copy of your object with a scale command now i want to tell you the difference between copy and instance now i make a copy of this object in one side and make an instance of it in another side. The copied object is independent. It doesn't have any connections with other objects. But the instance object has a two-way relation with the first object. As you can see their segments are changing together and also their sizes. And on the whole the settings that we have in modify part. Sometimes 
students uh, think that if they scale one of the objects, the other one would change too. But you have to know that a scale, move, and rotate are not affected by instance, and you can only have this effectiveness in modify part. In instance part, we have a button called make unique. If you change your mind and you don't want them to be connected to each other, you can select the object you want and make it unique by clicking on this button. Now it's out of instance and you can apply any changes you want and it won't affect the first object. I want to tell you a tip which doesn't have much usage but it's a question for many students even for the ones who has worked with 3ds max a lot they usually don't know the difference between instance and reference they have a little difference with each other we usually use instance and reference doesn't have much usage for us but i want to tell you about it let me open a new file. I create a teapot. I make an instance of it in this side. And, and make a reference on the other side. Look, all of them are linked together. And if I change any of them, the others will change too. It's a little different. I don't have its parameters here. The object which I use reference for is linked to the original shape. But it's the same. It doesn't make a difference. The difference is when you want to apply a modifier for this shape. For example, lattice, which we will talk about it later. It affects all of them. It's for the instance shape and it's the same for all these three shapes. But when you apply a modifier on a reference object, for example lattice, it only affects this one alone. And these two don't change. It's the only important difference that reference and instance have. And they are the same in other ways. Now let's do some practice, but let me tell you something about segments first. Here you can increase the segments of the shape. Segments are the lines which form the shape. By increasing the segments, you will have a smoother shape. Let me deselect the crossing for now. Look, I increased the segments to the maximum. By pressing 7 on my keyboard, it shows the total segments for me. By clicking on the positive icon and go to configure Viewports, this window opens and you can go to a statistics tab and select the total plus selection part. Now you have the total segments and the selected object segments or you can just have the selection object segments or just total segments of your project. I select this one. Now if you have several shapes in your scene, it gives you the segments of the selected objects here and the total segments here. Now as you can see, the segments of this shape is 262,000 and that's a lot of segments which for a small teapot something like 20 segments would be enough and it doesn't have much difference to have 22 segments or 64 it just makes your scene heavier there is an important tip here you always have to try to work optimal just use the amount of segments you need I suggest you to Get used to use as less segments as possible from the beginning and eliminate even two or four unnecessary segments you see. Now in this box we have here, the segments are completely useless, so always set them on the minimum amount. 
Sometimes there is unnecessary default segments in some shapes. For example, these five height segments are useless. So I set the minimum amount for this. This was a very important tip about segments. You have to be careful about it. Segments can be shown in two ways. By pressing F3, it shows the objects in wireframe mode, which you can only see the segment. And by pressing F4, it shows both the surfaces and segments simultaneously. And you can do it from this part too, which we usually use F3 and F4. And we don't have much to do with its other options. But for some display modes, you can use these other options from here. Wireframe mode with F3 shortcut key and other modes which you can use from here. I will tell you about this part more later. We usually use clay mode for showing the models. In this situation which segments are shown and it's set on clay mode, our shapes are displayed better. And usually it's used for some CG contents, for showing the models or the authenticity of them. For getting the output of the exercises I give you this session, you can use this part. From Tools, Preview and Capture a Still Image, you can have an image from your scene. Select a name for it and click on grab and now an image of your scene is taken and you can save it to send it to our support group or have it for yourself in this way we could create an image of our scene well I don't want to make this session less than hard I don't continue anymore. I will talk about the different kinds of getting copies in the next session. Let's do some practices together. Please practice all the subjects I talked about in this session, especially the shortcut keys. Try to get used to using shortcut keys and never click on the comments. Try to get used to using shortcut keys. I've prepared an image here. Your health is very important. And this is the first session you are going to use 3ds Max software. It may take a lot of your time. And you have to take care of your eyes and spine. I sometimes work on projects for 7 or 8 hours continuously and if you don't observe some items, your eyes may get hurt. Not only 3ds Max software but any other program that requires long hours of working with a computer. Well, as you can see, this image is showing how to sit at a computer correctly. We have to use a, a standard table, standard chair and table. Sometimes the students ask me what if we are using a laptop. It doesn't matter. You have to use a, a standard table and you can put something under your laptop. For example, several books to adjust it in the right position for your proper view. And after that, you'd better use separate mouse and keyboard for your laptop because if you bring the laptop closer, it won't be in the right position anymore. In general, laptops aren't made for long hours of usage. They're more usable for short periods of time or when you need a portable device. On the whole, I don't suggest laptop. But if you are using it, try to observe the standards be careful about your sitting position. Look, your spine have to be this straight and 
your viewing angle your forehead has to be almost at the same level as the upper part of your monitor this is very important and your head doesn't have to be much upper or lower your view has to be straight this way you don't have to look upside down or vice versa your hands have to be straight and in the same level as your table you have to adjust the height of your chair in order to have a good position of your hands and also can place the bottom of your feet on the floor it shouldn't be higher your knees shouldn't be bent and don't sit at your computer more than one and half or two hours continuously Try to work with a grey or neutral range of colors which hurt your eyes less. And try to blink a lot in order to moisture your eyes. Please observe these items, your health is very important.